Welcome to the introductory video for the combined load and review problem on the bicycle handlebars. And this is where you can actually check that you got your reactions or internal reactions that are occurring on the cross section at the height where point A occurs that you got those correct. And so we've been talking about this load that could come down from the handlebars and end up in your head tube. Now, if you were just riding normally and you press down with your right hand and put a force on the right side of the handlebars, your handlebars would just, the whole bike would just turn and you wouldn't develop really high loads. It would just transfer the load right through. But what if the bike was locked into place and you tried turning it and then suddenly it can't move and so you have a resistance. So you are going to get some additional resistance in the bike and heaven forbid <laughs> you've had something like this happen. Let's hope that's not in your future, but it's kind of funny. All right, so what are we looking at? So here's our problem. And what we want to do right now is before we even look at the reactions, let's stop and take a quick second and make sure you understand how these forces move through the system. All right, so when you were visualizing, we talked about how important it was to separate the force into both its vertical and horizontal component. And so I've drawn those on the diagram here and I've calculated what those are. So we have those listed. And so then what we wanna do is just look at what we might have on our cross section. So I'm actually gonna put the answers right on the diagram. We have our force in the X, force in the Y, that's known. We're gonna end up with a moment in the negative direction around the Z axis, which would be the force in the Y times W plus the force in the X times H. We have a positive moment in the X, which is the force in the Y times L. And then we have a positive moment in the Y, which is the force of the X times L. And I'm gonna go ahead and write out what the magnitude of those are, but it turns out, whoops, I've got my units wrong, so let's fix that. Those would be all inch pounds or pound inches, whichever way you wanna write that. Now it's really important that we stress that these internal reactions are constant across the cross section, right? They are assumed to act through the centroid and they're not just acting at point A, they act on the whole cross section. And then we know when we calculate the stresses, the stresses around the cross section, uh, whether at the outer fiber, at the centroid, the top, the bottom, those could differ based on where we're located but the entire cross section feels the same internal moments and forces. That's super important. Now, if you got those answers correct and you can do this, you're fine, you're done. If you struggled, well, let me take that back. You're not done, you're done with this part, move on to finding the stresses. If you struggled, watch the rest of the video and I'm gonna show you two different methods you could use to find those reactions. So our first method is going to use the basics of statics where we cut a section and with that section, we go ahead and basically just draw the reactions on the opposite side of A and find all the equal and opposite reactions. So redraw your tube, go ahead and put your axes showing forces in the X and the force in the Y, no reason to keep it at 60 degrees. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to have our dimensions. But then we wanna come in and put all the possible support reactions, and I'm gonna draw everybody in the positive direction. I didn't draw a possible horizontal force in the Z, mostly because we know that just doesn't exist. And I drew everything in the positive direction, just so we don't have to make any assumptions. Obviously, if we sum forces in the x equal to zero, we're gonna find that our fx is negative. We drew that in the wrong direction. So it just tells us to change the arrow. And then that actually shows that our fx should be going the other way, which is equal and opposite to the image above. Perfect. Fy, we get a positive 346. So that was drawn in the correct direction. If we sum moments at a, but we sum it about the x axes, we would just have Fy times eight inches and our MA, turns out our MA is about the X axis is negative. So we have an M of X of 2078 and it should have been drawn in the other direction. So again, equal and opposite to the image above. 
we end up getting a negative 1,200 inch-pounds for my, again, equal and opposite than to what's above if we draw it in the opposite direction. And when we take the moment about the z, our fy actually has to have a moment arm times 8, and our fx has a moment arm times 10 about the z. And we know any direction that we got a negative answer for was that we assumed that direction incorrectly. All right, so this is one method to do it. This method still really requires you to be able to see and visualize how each force has to move. It has to translate in the X or translate in the Y to get all the way back to point A. And that's really all you're visualizing. How do I have to move it along these axes, sort of like a Tetris game, right, to get it back to point A? And for every distance you have to move it through that isn't on its line of action, that's going to create a moment. If this is still too big of a jump for you, then I recommend going ahead and using the method where you translate the load one, one direction at a time. So first, translate it. How much do I have to move it along the z-axis? How much do I have to move it along the y-axis? And then step by step, you can see all the moments until you get to the final end point. So if we were to start with moving fx and fy to the x-axis, that means we have to redraw our bar, but we're no longer going to have the handlebars showing. And so we we're doing both fx and fy through the distance of 8 inches, which is along the z-axis. That's their perpendicular distance. So that's interesting because if I move a force in the x, a distance in the z, an x and a z result in a moment about the y. And if I move the force in the y along the z distance, a force in the y times a z distance results in a moment in the x. So we actually get out our my and our mx. We can draw then our forces that we know are going to be applied. And then we can draw our moment in the y and our moment in the x that are occurring from being moved in the z distance. Now that we have everything along the x axes, then we can actually move the forces again back to the y axes. So we're going to move them in an x direction. Now, that means we're going to redraw our image, but we're going to redraw it without the stem. So it's now just the vertical part of the head tube. We'd still draw all the way down to the base, so we still have our point A. We can put in our axes. We'd move our force in the Y and our force in the X. And then we've said that moments just translate as a constant. So we're just going to pick those moments up and put them back. But since we picked up the moments and moved those through horizontal distance, I'm sorry, since we picked up the forces and moved those through horizontal distances, we do have to see if we caused any moments. But what about Fx? Fx just moved along its line of action. Can't cause any moments, so that's not an issue. But Fy, stop and think about it. Fy moved in an x, y, or z direction. Well, that eight inches is an x direction. So a force in the y moving a distance in the x causes a moment about the z. And in this case, whoops, 2,771 inch pounds. We've got one more move to go. We need to move everything down to point A. Now, as we do this, we're going to draw a little bit bigger. There's our point A and our axes. We have our force in the X, our force in the Y. We can put our moment in the X, our moment in the Y, and our moment in the Z that we know is Fy times W, or a distance in the X. Now, Fy has its line of action along the Y axis. 
we're just moving it up and down that. So it does not cause a moment. But fx, I want you to think about how that's moving. fx moves, right, through a dy distance of 10 inches. So we're going to have fx times dy. That's going to cause another moment about the z, and that's going to be 2,000 inch-pounds. So we can literally just add up an additional fx times h, and we have our final solution. And so if we compare the step-by-step -step procedure of method two back to the original answer, you can see we have the exact same solution. I hope this helped.